Welcome to the 25th season of Hempfield Happenings. I'm Davey Striggle, your host for this month, and I'm part of the brand new class making the next several shows. This month, stick around for stories about a student boxer and new signs in the high school hallways, and learn about how Hempfield Choir gives back to the community and changes to school lunches. Stay until the end for a look at Hempfield's 2022 homecoming court. This and much more on this month's episode of Hempfield Happenings. First story, last year, Kira Miller investigated the Pledge of Allegiance and its place in schools. I pledge allegiance to the flag, and you know the rest. Something we say here and all across America every morning. But why do we stand or sit for the Pledge of Allegiance? I talked to Mr. Mitchell and a few other students to figure out why. Uh, what I found in my research is that the, there was actually several uh, variations of the Pledge of Allegiance and that the first one on record um, was actually created by one Captain George T. Balk, one of the authors of the New York Board of Education that came up with a very, very small version of a Pledge of Allegiance and it was in the light of trying to have uh, lessons of patriotism within the classroom. But I stand for the pledge because I just feel like it's a symbol of respect for the people that did fight for the freedom and the veterans and everyone else that fought for our freedom. Do you find it disrespectful when people don't stand? In a way, like, I can see, like, standing would be respectful, but I do think it's a matter of opinion. Like, I totally agree that anybody can, you can sit or stand, it's your opinion. I don't think it's wrong or right because you do have that freedom. I sit. Why? Um, just from what words I've been listening to, just doesn't really match up with how people are actually treated in, like, America at all. Every morning, here and all across America, the Pledge of Allegiance is said. But is whether or not you stand ultimately up to you? Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. It was called a question uh, as to mandating why students should be standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and that it may be conflicting with some other personal reasons as well. And then that was overturned in, in uh, 1944 with the West Virginia State uh, Board of Education decision in which students are not required to. Please rise. For the but how much of the pledge do students feel they can confidently say? I pledge allegiance. I honestly, not to the extent you would think. To me, it just seems like it should be reworded in a way. Under God, definitely, because a lot of people don't believe in God, or that's just like not the religion at all. And freedom for all, yeah, no. So next time you hear the pledge, think about the history behind it. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Kira Miller. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> next up. Dylan Daisy dives into the story of a Hempfield student that has been greatly impacted by the sport of boxing. Here at the Lancaster City Boxing Academy, Hempfield High School's Josiah Ortiz trains and is now the two-time 
national champion of the Boxing Junior Olympics. Now, Josiah wasn't always the gold-winning athlete he is today, but started his journey when he was around seven to eight years old, having been in the ring for almost eight years. Well, for a while, there was like not much improvement. I couldn't really compete yet because I was I was like big for my age. So first, I had like for the first few years, if I wanted to compete, I had to make sure I had I lose weight. I lost that weight, and I started getting experience from the competitions and fighting winning or losing make sure like you know what you're really doing so from monday through fridays after school josiah works hard with the help of his trainer to keep his boxing skills growing and not on the ropes but josiah has a little bit of anger you know and that that's what i think makes him such a great fighter too and you want to be aggressive in the ring but now it's controlled effective intelligence behind that that aggression that that comes out as a very high iq boxer in the ring alone so he's not just in there you know losing his head which he he's he's done he's struggled with for so many years josiah shows no plans of stopping his success in the ring however as he himself plans on taking his talents to the top hopefully champion professional at the higher ranks and succeeding throughout these fights that if I get the opportunity to make it to the big, like the real big level of professional boxing, succeeding in that level. I think Josiah will stick with this for the rest of his life, whether he decides to, to, to move on and become a professional boxer or he just decides to give back on the coaching aspect. I don't see him ever like leaving boxing. Boxing is going to be with him forever, in my opinion, but I, I know his dreams are to become, to go as far and get as much out of the amateur program that he can. His short-term goal is to be a USA boxing champion, which he's already accomplished being number one in the country, but now it's getting on the USA team, is to make the team and, and travel internationally to be able to compete against the number one guys in the country from Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Spain, you know. So that, that's the short-term goal. And with that comes a tremendous amount of experience that that you can't buy anywhere and not and there's only a small handful of people who have who will have that in the world that type of experience that international experience Josiah has worked hard to achieve what he has done and has the support of his coach and loved ones as he continues to aim high in the sport of boxing from Hempfield Happenings I'm Dylan Daisy With me in the studio is Mr. Ryan Landis the new athletic director for our district how are you doing today, Mr. Landis? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. I used to be an elementary teacher at the Elanco School District. Uh, for 14 years, I've been an elementary teacher. I ended at Mountville Elementary at Hempfield. And then the last nine years, I was the athletic director at Warwick School District before becoming the uh, director of athletics and activities here at Hempfield. What does your normal day-to-day -day routine look like? Well, there's, there's very little that's normal about it, and I think that's kind of one of the things that my personality that likes. So as I'm driving into work, uh, there's kind of a general plan, uh, but typically 20 minutes into the day, it's completely blown up. Um, whether it's weather, whether it's uh, issues that occurred at a previous event, um, whether it's things on the schedule, you just have to be flexible and, and ready to go. Uh, being an athletic director is, is a lot of hours. It's, it's not unusual for an athletic director to work 70, 80 hours a week. Uh, there's a lot of things that get done during the day. Uh, and so when the afternoon comes at 3.30, 4 o'clock, uh, it feels like you're almost starting a second part of your job because um, there are many times where I may be in it 7.30, 8, 8.30, 9, and, and I get home at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, we've had two of the football games I got home that we had here at Hemfield. I got home after midnight. It's just, uh, there's just a lot of things that are going on and, and you just have to be flexible and, and be ready to go. Uh, but for me, uh, the focus is always on relationships, trying to, to support coaches and student athletes, getting to know everyone and uh, make it a positive experience for everyone. What are parts of the job that are often overlooked, you think, by the average person? I think the hours, uh, the, the amount of meetings, trying to, to troubleshoot stuff. Um, th there's a lot of, of 
issues that come up that you try to, to, to resolve uh, and you do the best you can with it. When did you start as Hempfield's athletic director? I uh, just started at the beginning of July. Uh, so it's uh, not quite three months that I've been on the job here. What is your favorite memory for the short time you've been with Hempfield as their athletic director? I think getting to meet the student athletes and getting to know them a little bit more. Um, having come from Warwick, I know some of the student athletes from them being on the other side. Uh, and, and what's fun to watch and, and learn is that the, the person you see on the field or in the gym um, is not always the same personality once you get to know them off the, the field or, or outside of the gym or the mat. So uh, that, that's been an, a, exciting for me to, to just try and kind of get to know some of the, the student athletes a little more. Thank you so much for being with us today. Sure, it was great being here. Here at Hemfield High School, we have signs. A lot of signs. Even though we have a lot of signs here at Hemfield, signs don't always last forever. So I was able to get an interview with Miss Smith, the teacher in charge of making the new signs at Hemfield. And we talked about how the signs personally benefit the students and the person who originally created the design of the signs. Honestly, I think it just brings a lot of like joy to the hallways that are very dull uh, before this. Plus it's a lot easier to find classes when you can look up and see the numbers. Um, it's easier to know which bathrooms are in the um, e-hall pass system when they're labeled. So I think hopefully it benefits more than just my AP classes. So the design that you see is really responsible with like Karsten. Um, he did a great job of kind of coming up with it. The whole class approved of it. We knew they'd be short enough that it would be hard for people to hit them. Um, and we thought the black looked like a knight's helmet. Um, my friend Arden and I designed it in the classroom and drew it on the whiteboard um, and then we made stencils from there. A lot of students um, struggle to find their classes right away um, and having the numbers um, around the hallways is going to be helpful for a lot of people. Um, and then especially back to school night as teachers are going around to find all the classes of their kids, um, that would also be very helpful. I want to really thank our janitors and our, their support staff for hanging them um, because I know that was an undertaking. And this is just one small piece on how Hemfield High School stays up to date and makes sure that their students have the greatest experience at Hemfield High School. From Hemfield Happenings, I am Thomas Williams. Music at Hemfield is very highly appreciated. For our next story, Liv Anderson takes a closer look at how music positively impacts the school. Hempfield High School Chamber Hempfield offers many musical opportunities for the students that mean so much more than just the notes on the page. The COVID-19 pandemic took away many important aspects of the choir programs at Hempfield, but it has made the choirs today even stronger. I think the biggest thing for me is looking at what these last two years have been mm -hmm. with choir and where we can go forward together and how we can be that community family aspect that was really gone with COVID. I would say that during COVID it definitely like um, brought us apart a lot both figuratively and physically just because we weren't allowed to sing close together which as a choir is super important just for like blending but I think that uh, COVID in a way did definitely make us stronger because now we kind of appreciate uh, being able to be so close with everyone we sing with every day. Now that things have started to go back to normal, it's very important to not lose sight of what great of an impact music has on people. Music's important for all high school students to remind all of us that we need each other and that this group of people can create something so magical and so wonderful and so inspiring. I love to see, I love to see. So I know I experience a wide range of music from like being in band, being in indoor drumline, marching band, to our choir programs. I feel like music overall just has this awesome emotional connection between everybody that's involved. Like you're not just a solo singer in choir, you're not just a soloist in band. You have to work as a group 
And it's one of those unique things that you can have that emotional connection, not just with yourself and the people around you, but with an audience. I can think I had the worst rehearsal. I can think I had the worst day. But when a student comes up to me during their lunch after school and says, Mr. Ramos, I have had that song we've sung since first period in my head all day, sort of makes me think, okay, I did my job. And that's what matters. <laughs> High School's choir director, Mr. Ramos, has a clear goal of the choir director he's working to become in order to leave the biggest impact on each of his students. I think I want to be the director that I had, who is someone that just really loves music, really loves choral excellence, and really wants to make high school students realize that they have really cool opportunities that they can take with them once they're out of high school. Choir has evolved immensely since COVID started, from having to sing 10 feet apart with a massive singing mask to being back to one huge musical family. But one thing has stayed the same, and that's how important music is to everyone who is involved in it. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Liv Anderson. For our last story, Hempfield is exploring new ideas for help at lunchtime. Joseph Strigel looked at two schools within the district and their ideas. Schools across America are experiencing problems with their lunchtime help. According to the USDA, 73% of school districts, school food authorities, or SFAs, reported experiencing staffing challenges. The Hempfield School District is enduring those challenges in various ways. Here at Hempfield High School, teachers watch over students during lunchtime, and by doing so, also form and strengthen connections through an initiative known as Connection Time. Yeah, it's it's a, an intentional time to connect, as it's stated. See students we know, enjoy lunch, and, and develop relationships that we see them in the hallway or in class. It's more meaningful. You go over and, and, and say a hello, a verbal hello. Um, you engage in conversation, ask questions, listen, be intentional in responding. I like to tell a little joke here and there. Maybe uh, they ask you about you and your, your family and yourself a little more, get a little more connections. You hang with good people, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Alex and Amit, I have them in class. Good stuff. Here at East Petersburg Elementary School, they have a different approach. Parents help out during lunchtime. When you don't have a spoon, they can give you a spoon. They help me open my bags, they help me open my drink, and they also help me with, yeah, if my lunchbox is stuck, they help me open that also. When we accidentally spill milk or something. She does. Oh, it's all 11 o'clock, I come in. Clean hands, put gloves on, wait for the little ones to come in. And then we just pretty much, after that, the younger grades usually need help opening stuff because they're still learning. The older kids usually just raise their hand if they need a napkin or if they have to use a restroom. Building a connection with the children, ones that your children know, and just ones in general, just kind of sometimes put the smile on a kid's face. They might have been having a rough morning or just not feeling the day and you come in there and you smile say how's your day going what do you got there for lunch that looks fun it puts a smile on their face and i think it also gives kids confidence being able to speak to people that they're not used to as well so. thank you ladies thank you enjoy your day okay so i just love doing it i love kids so <laughs> the hempfield school district is employing various methods to get lunchtime help including using parent volunteers and connection time for Hempfield Happenings, I'm Joey Strickland. Welcome to Hempfield Highlights. Here are some th events that happened around the district recently. In August, Hempfield came back to school. Teachers and students were very excited to come back and are excited for the year ahead. On September 1st, one third of the senior class woke up early to attend Senior Sunrise. The students who initiated, planned, and ran the event all by themselves enjoyed donuts, bagels, 
coffee, pancakes, bacon, and eggs. On September 15th, the Lancaster Barnstormers helped celebrate Hemfield's spirit. Hemfield singers sang the national anthem before the game, and the varsity cheerleaders cheered them on to an 8-2 win against the York Revolution. Our cheerleaders were working hard last month doing car washes and selling chicken to support their team and going to Juniper Villages to perform for the residents. Homecoming week took place from September 26th to October 1st at Hempfield. Spirit Week featured days like Twin Day, Decades Day, and Team Jersey Day. On Wednesday the 28th, the high school had the fall fling for the first time in years. It featured fun events like a pep rally, climbing wall, and dunk tank. Charlotte Robards made this video to introduce the homecoming court to the school. Outside of school, I dance at Encore Dance Center, and I'm in Encore's performance company. In school, I'm involved with Dance Theater, I'm in the musical, I work on the Comtech social medias, I also am a part of the Studio 7 announcements, I'm a part of the steering committee, I'm the communications advisor of Renaissance Club, I'm a board member on Video Production Club, I'm in NHS, and also Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, after high school, I plan on attending a four-year college to study communications and to continue dancing. Uh, it feels good to, you know, it's kind of an honor to get voted in by our other classmates. I'm excited for all the events. Uh, I'm excited for actually the homecoming dance. Uh, inside school, I'm in FBLA, NHS, FCA, varsity club, and I'm on the boys varsity basketball team. Uh, I play club basketball through the spring, and I'm involved in my church group at Hempfield United Methodist. Yeah, I plan to attend a four-year college, uh, pursue a degree in supply chain management. I'm part of NHS, the Natural, National Honor Society, and I play basketball for the varsity girls basketball team. And I'm also part of GRRO, which is the Global Refugee Refu Relief Association. I, I play AAU basketball, which is basically just travel basketball for 717 Hoop Dreams. And I'm also part of KCFA, which is the Kenya Christian Fellowship in America um, Association, which is just where Kenyans who are also Christians come together and worship God. I uh, definitely would say that I'm a hard worker and that I get my stuff done, whether it be hard or easy. After high school, I plan to go to a four-year university to hopefully study finance or architecture. I'm part of Minithon, Grow, and then I'm part of the girls swimming and diving team. I work at Hemfield Rec as lifeguard, I'm a Girl Scout, and then I swim at Five Star. I would say I'm very charismatic and passionate about what I do. Um, I'm going to attend Shippensburg University to continue my athletics and swimming and get a bachelor's in biology, then move on to get my master's in nursing and become a nurse anesthetist. I'm part of Hempfield Young Democrats. I am taking Global America, Intro to Engineering and Design. I work at Woodcrest Villa, which is a retirement home, and Taco Bell. I am a hardworking, comical man. I'm happy and I feel honored that my classmates voted for me. So I take AP Microeconomics and I take Environmental Science and then I take a dual enrollment course, Introduction to Literature. I'm in Hemfield Girls Varsity Volleyball and National Honor Society, um, Steering Committee, and oh, and Powder Puff. I was forgetting about that. Um, I work at Tropical Smoothie. Um, I play volleyball. I mean, I don't really get much time because volleyball takes up most of my time. I work hard and then I stay true to myself. I want to go attend a four-year university and get a business degree in marketing and sales. I don't know, I'm just happy that my classmates nominated me. It's pretty cool, pretty cool experience. I, I'm on a football team, Hempfield football team, <laughs> and I'm on the wrestling team. Football, which is my number one focus. I really love football, and that's made me just, you know, really look at a brotherhood a different way. Uh, he's a hard worker. He grinds 24/7. He doesn't. He'll never give up on you. And you know, he's just he's a good kid. 
I attend a four-year college, play football in college, and you know, get it done, I guess. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm currently in AP Chem, Physics, and Calc. This semester, I'm doing powder puff, and then during the winter, I'll be swimming. And then for clubs, I'm in National Honor Society, Varsity Club, Steering Committee, uh, Minithon, and Grow. I lifeguard at Lancel Pool. I'm determined and I'm hardworking, especially towards things that I'm passionate about. After high school, I just plan to go to a four-year college or university. I'm not exactly sure the major yet. I'm in my um, church's worship team, and I also play and teach piano and violin. I play piano and lead worship with my dad, the music. I'm part of cross-country team and the track team, and I'm in the orchestra, and I'm in National Honor Society, um, Global Refugee Relief Organization, Minithon, Varsity Club. I would describe myself as a hardworking, driven person who's very passionate about caring for others. Yeah, I plan after high school to go to college to earn a master's in psychology to become a therapist. Yes, I participate in a jazz band and cross country as well. I uh, play in a band out of Quarryville known as the Small Town Troubadours. Uh, and I also thoroughly enjoy chicken chasing. You, you chase chickens around the field, man. An individual who will uh, definitely not steal your 1999 Honda Civic and use it to transport a banjo to the edge of a cliff. Just uh, work in the field of music in any way I can, really. Uh, preferably as a performer, but I'd do something else as well. The homecoming king and queen were voted in by the class of 2023. Congratulations to Riley Hornberger and Anna Koger on being chosen. Hemfield Varsity Football had a great month in September. With a record of only five wins and one loss, they are on track to have a great season. Keep it up, Knights. That's all for this month. From all of us here at HSD TV7, Thanks for watching this episode of Hemfield Happenings. Be sure to tune in next month as we continue to celebrate our 25th season with more great stories about our district and community. Have an excellent month.